Endurance Junkie Podcast, episode 29. Hey, hey, Junkie, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Endurance Junkie Podcast, the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest smartest and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Now I'm joined here today by Jocelyn McCauley, who is the winner of the female amateur division at the recent Ironman World Championships in Kona. Jocelyn ran cross country and track at university before moving to Cincinnati, Ohio, where she started working as an intensive care unit cardiology nurse. She and her husband Scott also started a family and are the proud parents of 18-month-old Emily. Jocelyn, thanks for taking the time to chat here today. Now, for those of us who don't know you, can you quickly tell us a little bit about yourself and your sporting background growing up? Yeah, um, so I started uh, with running. Um, in elementary school, they just sent us out during PE, uh, like physical education um, in the U.S. is what we call it. So they just sent us out and told us to run laps around this field. So we would run laps and laps around this field for I don't know how long. You know, of course, it felt so much longer when we were kids but and I would beat all the guys and I thought like I was so cool because I could do that so so I got into uh, running and started doing um, summer track and then my sister my older sister Meredith uh, she started doing cross country and track and field in junior high so we are a very competitive family so I had to beat her so I started doing it in junior high as well and um and then I just continued through high school and got recruited uh, to Brigham Young University. It's out in Utah, Provo, Utah, and uh, went there and then ran there and also ran at University of Cincinnati out in Ohio and um, then went from there. So then my sister, the older sister who got me into running, also got me into triathlons and and stuff. So I come from a really heavy running background, but I also have a swimming background. We would swim in the summertime um, on like a, just a city league team and stuff. So, um, and then biking I got into when I got injured uh, doing uh, cross country at BYU. So. so basically you were doing all three sports, but separately uh, growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mostly, mostly running. And I, I really actually got into mountain biking um, versus like road biking okay. and like that so because they have some gorgeous mountain biking trails out in utah so. yeah we, we get the pictures here in, in europe and make us really jealous <laughs> um so running got you a scholarship at a university is that correct yeah i did i i got a scholarship at brigham young university so they have a great running program an awesome coach and an awesome team so it was opportunity of a lifetime to be able to do that so oh, cool um so yeah i'm mean, the impression that we have here in, in, in Europe is that college is college sports is pretty big in, in the U.S., but um, we have the impression that a lot of people stop uh, doing sports after they, they graduate, you know, start focusing on their careers. Um, you didn't. You, you continued. You even picked up, you know, triathlon, as you said, uh, which I guess is, is even more uh, time-consuming than, than running was. Um, can you tell us a bit about that period in your life and, you know, after graduation and, and starting triathlon? Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to compare like college sports here versus in Europe too. So, I mean, I I don't know if they're bigger or <laughs> not, but um they seem like they're a big deal, especially football, but um so yeah, so I did sports at BYU and I did cross country and track and field there and then I did at, at UC University of Cincinnati here and um and then I actually didn't go right into like triathlon and stuff like that. I actually started working as an exercise specialist um, at a uh, facility here in Cincinnati. And I did that for a year and um, realized I really actually wanted to be a nurse. So I went back to nursing school. And, and during that time, I actually was uh, racing some local like fun runs and stuff like that that would give out, you know, a couple hundred bucks here or there. So, um, I still continued with the running and stuff and I think I continued it just because it is a way to stay active and I just have loved it my whole life um, and stuff and I mean fortunately running is something that you can do it's an individual sport versus a lot of other college sports that you have to have a team for so it's a lot easier to 
uh, continue with it throughout your, you know, lifetime. Um, so yeah, I went back to school for, for nursing. And, um, during all of that time, I was helping my sister with her races, uh, doing triathlon, doing Ironman and stuff. And, um, you know, I was like sherpaing her races, like that's what we call it. So, so, um, and, um, I absolutely, you know, loved that and I was loving the atmosphere and everything. And so I signed up for a 70.3 in 2012 um, and that actually got shortened. Uh, so it wasn't a, a full half or whatever because it was like 115 with the heat index that day. So it was just too hot. So um, then the next year, uh, that was 2012, then 2013. So last year, I finally was able to do a 70.3. So I did three 70.3s then, and then um, got into fulls this year. So. So and it was your sister that got you got you doing these uh, these triathlons. How, how did she fare in in, in racing? Uh, she's done really well, awesome. I mean, she qualified for Kona. We we both qualified in Texas and. Um, so we both qualified at the same race. She got fourth. She was just, I think, like seven minutes behind me or less um, in that race. And she just didn't have an awesome race in Kona. She actually also coaches me. So, But she didn't have an awesome race in Kona. She uh, had some mechanical issues on her bike and, and whatnot. So, you know, you have your races, your good ones and your bad ones. So mm, She'll be back with a vengeance, no doubt. Um, okay. Was Ironman always... The ultimate goal when you when you picked up the sport, or because it sounds like you didn't really do any short distances. No, I did. I did one Olympic before I did at a seventy point three, um, and then it's just been halves. And I guess this this year I did do uh, USA's, so that, that was an Olympic distance. But I used to say I would never do a full. So I mean, a halves I was fine with. I mean, it's not that long <laughs> but uh i you know i told everyone i would never do a full never do a full and then uh i just got all wrapped up in like the hype with my sister's races it was just an electrifying atmosphere at these at these races and um so i did you know one and then i qualified for kona and so i was like well i guess i have to do that one <laughs> so you, you, at least you knew what it was yeah <laughs> Because I hear stories from people who you know qualify and then they said, "Oh, Kona, what's this all about?" Um, <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're working with your sister as a coach. Is she a qualified coach, or uh, where does she get her knowledge from? Yeah, she is. She has a, I think, coaching cycling coaching certification, and I mean, she just has her knowledge from a whole bunch of experience that she's had and that she's gone through and and whatnot. So I mean. I, and she does her research and everything, so uh, I feel confident in her coaching abilities. And she knows me, you know, she's known me since I was born, so so she knows everything about me. She knows my injuries, she knows my history and, you know, health history and everything. So it's a really good uh, setup, I feel like, so. Yeah. Do you often train together? No, she lives in Texas, so unfortunately we don't get to train together that much, but when we do, we love it, <laughs> so. Uh -huh. And uh, so you qualified uh, in in Texas. Um, what were your expectations going into into that race? You, uh, you know, being at your first Ironman, was it just about finishing, or did you really go in expecting to qualify? Yeah, well, yeah. People, you know, ask me that during, like, right before the before the race all the time. Like, do you want to qualify? I was like, well, you know, my number one goal is to have fun, and everything else follows if you're having fun on race day. So. I mean, I I had time goals. I wanted to swim a 105, and I swam a 103 something, and I wanted to bike a 525, and I ended up biking a little faster than that. And then I wanted to do a three hour marathon, and that was the thing I was the most bummed about because I did a 315. So, um, I mean, running is my sport. Running is my thing. So, so I thought I could do a lot faster than that. But, um. So, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily want to qualify for Kona, but if it happened, it happened. I didn't even make the decision of if I was going to go or not, if I qualified and until that day and, and whatnot. So, I mean, it was it was a great experience, but yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you maybe take us through your race day there in, in Kona? Um, what was it like to, to have a separate swim start from the age group men? Because I think that was already a main, a big difference compared to the, the Texas race. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
I mean, the Texas race, I was actually really terrified of that mass start because that was my first mass start um, ever. Like, I've always done wave starts, which I've also said I hate wave starts. So I didn't know if I would hate a mass start or a wave start more. And actually, uh, going back to the Texas, I uh, I actually got in a bike crash um, two weeks before that race and broke a rib and just had a whole bunch of road rash and stuff. So mostly I was terrified getting smacked in the chest and, you know, like re-fracturing that rib again and stuff, but that didn't happen. So, <laughs> but in Kona, um, you know, I was excited. It, I was, it was pros and cons. I mean, I was excited that there were only going to be about 500 people on that start line. Um, but, um, I think that women are a lot more aggressive when they're by themselves versus when we're mixed in with the men. So I think there was a little bit more aggression on that start line than what I'm used to. I mean, it also is Kona, so I don't know what, you know, what was the reason, but, um, there are a lot of clawing and just elbows and just craziness. But, um, so I liked the fewer people. I didn't like the aggression. And then I really didn't like having to swim through the guys at the end. Um, well, it was, it was really, they got heavy really after like the turnaround uh, point is when we just started swimming through a ton of them. And so, I mean, I didn't really like that, but, um, uh, you know, there were pros and cons, but I don't know if they're going to keep it. I'm assuming they're going to keep it, which, you know, who knows, but the actual race day, uh, I had a new bike. So I got a new bike from QR who hooked me up and, uh, got a uh, new setup with my nutrition with a speed fill system and so I was uh, that morning I had to set up a couple of different things new on my bike which is never a good That's idea. That's not pretty ideal no I was going to say. <laughs> no but you know sometimes it happens so um, my husband was supposed to bring me a couple of things that I was supposed to put on my bike before check in before bike check in but he missed his flight because he slept in so he didn't oh. yeah he didn't get to Kona until uh you know like 10 o'clock at night that night so I had to do it morning of the race so that was always exciting and a couple of things weren't working like I wanted them to so it was a little bit intense you're still uh, married <laughs> yes <laughs> okay good <laughs> Yes, it, he he slept through his alarm because uh, he's been crazy at work. So I will forgive him for that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after I got my bike set up, uh, I said a quick prayer with my husband outside transition area and um, then went to the start, found my sister and found one of my training buddies uh, from Cincinnati, Allison, who also qualified. And and so I uh, swam out to that start, and uh, like I said, lots of clawing and just elbows, and everyone wanted to be you know, on that first part of the starting line. So um, then you know, the start, I was able to my, – my sister is an amazing swimmer, so I really wanted to stay on her feet as long as I could. And uh, so I was staying on her feet, got to the turnaround, still on her feet, and got to the end of the swim and was still on her feet. So it was – it was nice to have someone that you know, you know, swimming right behind and um, out there with you. So um, transition, I'm always really slow in transition. I need to work on that. <laughs> My sister is like, what in the world do you do in transition? How do you, you know, have these like four minute transition times? But, you know, I, I, I have to make sure I have everything just perfect and everything like that I need because I would hate to leave and not have everything. So um, the bike, I'm sure everyone knows how awful those winds were on the bike and just how crazy that was. I mean, there were several times that I thought I was going to crash on the bike and just have my bike slip from underneath me, which uh, my husband and a couple other spectators who I talked to said they saw people crash out on the course and stuff. So uh, it was hard to get nutrition in because of that, um, you know, and get my salt and everything, which... I actually lost my salt about 20, 30 miles in on the bike. And uh, so, I mean, I, you know, special needs is so much further. You can't go co do Kona without salt. So I stopped and I ran back and I got it and uh, kept going. Um, 
And then um, I was super excited because I felt so good on the bike. I usually feel awful with like 20 miles to go on the bike and uh, just like get me off of this thing Um, because biking never has been my number one thing. So, um, but I actually felt really good and I, I think it's, I actually, that was the first time I did a race on an actual tri bike. So that was instead of a road bike converted to a tri bike. Mm So that was probably a lot of it. And then, um, went out on the run and, uh, I, I wasn't paying attention to my place at all until I was really going out, uh, on the run and whatnot. And so at the first aid station or one of the first aid stations, a little boy told me that I was fifth. And so, um, my stated goal out, out loud was that I wanted to get top five. And, uh, my little hidden goal was that I wanted to win. So I was like, well, at least I, at least I met that goal of what I said that I wanted to do. So I was like, we'll just see what, what can happen. So just kept going and picking people off, paying attention to my heart rate. I, I run and uh, ride by my heart rate, not power or anything like that. So I, I'm not a big, huge numbers person at all. So I um, went out to Energy Labs and somewhere in there, I got into first. Uh, my husband saw me and told me I was second and that the first place girl was ahead of me just a little ways. And uh, I there, was, there were two girls that I passed around the energy labs one was a pro and one was an age grouper but I didn't know I couldn't see their numbers so I didn't know know which one was which um and so uh out in the energy labs my shoelace came in time my left shoelace and um in Ironman races like especially just at the end of those races I'm like if I stop I'm like it's gonna be hard to start again I know you know because your legs are gonna lock up and and whatnot and I was having some electrolyte issues uh, my plan wasn't going as planned, so, so uh, I didn't want to stop. So I just kept going with that shoelace and tied, which I everyone out on the course kept telling me, your shoelace, your shoelace. <laughs> so I was just giving the thumbs up and like, I, I know I, <laughs> I don't want to stop. So um, And then I think I hit the lowest point at mile 22 because for some reason I thought it was going to be mile 23. <laughs> and then I come and it says mile 22 and I was like, what? <laughs> that can't be right. That can't be right. <laughs> but um, then, you know, I got to see my husband. Uh, he, he was there at the top of Pol- uh, right before we turned on Polani. So right at the top of that hill. So I was able to see him there and then he ran down to the finish line to see me finish. And um, just coming into the finish was just so fun. You know, I think I, I just have always thought about, you know, running down a leaky drive. My sister always has told me, you know, when I'm doing these like hard mile repeats or something like that, just envision you running down a leaky drive with all of the spectators, you know, and stuff. So that was really, you know, really fun and just surreal moment of crossing that finish line. And, you know, it just, it, I don't know if it still hit me that I that I won the amateur race or not, but <laughs> um, and then uh, right at the finish line, the the one thing that I didn't expect was that um, the drug testers came up and were like, "We need to, you know, have you come with us to go to drug testing and stuff." I just I didn't even think about getting drug tested as an amateur athlete. So yeah, I think a lot of them were tested this year, which is that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I you know I'm. I would love, you know, zero, zero tolerance policy and, you know, you don't get to come back to a race if you do get caught, so. Uh, yeah, there was a big uh, deal going on, I think, in the men's 35, 39 category. Uh, but that's a, that's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, what's next for you now? Because, um, you know, with your, your finish time of 9.50, I think you would have gotten a top 25 uh, spot at the in the pro ranks. Is, is going pro something that you are considering? I'm looking into it um, more and more. Um, it's so confusing. There's so many like ins and outs about being a pro. I really wish there was like a manual or something like that, <laughs> just like how to do it. <laughs> but it's just a family decision that we're uh, we're talking about and you know considering um, to be able to create the inv- best environment with our uh, kids and just our family and whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you, you, you work as a nurse, uh, you're a wife, you're a mother, um, and then an elite amateur athlete. I guess a lot of people are wondering, you know, how do you do you fit it all in? Uh, can you maybe describe it like a typical work and training week? 
Yeah, so I recently just dropped down to PRN status. Uh, so I just schedule myself once a week is what I do. So I work the eight to 12 hours a week. Um, so it makes that life a lot more doable. Okay. Um, you know, but I do, I do usually uh, try to get in my workouts early in the morning um, before Emmy, my daughter, uh, wakes up uh, for the day and stuff because I, you know, I want to have my time with her, you know, have a full day with her to help, you know, her learn and grow. And um, one of our, one of the leaders in our church, uh, his name is Dieter F. Uchtdorf, uh, he says that love for kids is spelled T-I-M-E. So, I mean, I just make sure that I adjust my workouts in the morning so I can have the most uh, mommy time with her and um, family time with my husband at night and stuff. So, um, you know, work out early in the morning and then spend the time with my daughter or go into work, whichever one I have to do that day, and um, then spend family time at night. So, I mean, I work... I mean, I only work out 12 to 18 hours. So, I mean, I'm not working out like at a pro level with, you know, the 25 hours a week that they do. So, I mean, it, that also makes it a lot more doable being a amateur athlete. Yeah. So, but, but if, you, if you decide to go pro, um, you know, the fact that you work like 8 or 12 hours a week, um, you, you seem to have like a setup that would make that possible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, you touched the subject uh, of your church. You, you say you're pretty active in, in the Latter Day Saints uh, movement. Um, that also includes not training on a Sunday, if I'm correct. Uh, how was that decision made, and and what, how has that changed you both uh, as an athlete and and as a person? Um. So I mean, it's not necessarily like it's not necessarily if you are Mormon or Latter Day Saint person that you can't train on Sundays. Like. It's, I think it's all about how you interpret keeping the Sabbath day holy, which, you know, is the commandment that I interpret that is and, you know, don't work out on Sundays, um, which I used to work out on Sundays in high school. And, um, you know, I, uh, I decided, you know, after a lot of different counsel from different people to, you know, try, try to stop training on Sundays um, and see, you know, if I would get blessings from that and, they did. They come came really quickly, and they were very easy to see. I, my senior year, I was able to, you know, get a f full scholarship to BYU, and um, so I thought that was awesome. So I kept doing that, and I uh, felt like I kept getting blessed from uh, God for doing that. And uh, so, you know, I just set aside, you know, one day a week to be able to focus on, you know, worship and serving others, and. You know, it's just a lot of fun uh, to do. And, um, you know, I I think that it's definitely changed me as an athlete. I think it makes you a lot more well-rounded. It helps me recharge mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, everything. Um, I uh, My coach at BYU uh, is a very renowned coach, and he's won, you know, Coach of the Year several times. And he was asked once uh, what made BYU so dominant, so dominant year after year, and uh, he ha always said, you know, it's because we take Sundays off, you know, not just uh, because of that spiritual aspect that, you know, we get the blessing from, but, you know, it's, it's really good to be able to recharge physically on that one day of completely doing nothing um, physical, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I think it makes me a more balanced person and hopefully a better person. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it seems to work. So, I, mean, I guess, you know, training and, and especially recovery, you know, is, is definitely part of a good training plan. So if, if that's, uh, yeah, your Sunday, you know, easy to fit in, you know, <laughs> it's that day and uh, you can you can balance all your other um, workouts uh, around that, that rest day. Um, yeah, like I, I do my long rides on Saturday, and so then I have Sunday off, and I do my long runs on Monday. So I have that nice day in between those long rides and runs, whereas most people do a Saturday long ride and a Sunday long run. And so I think it's also prevented me from getting injured as much as well. So yeah, I think it's a mistake that a lot of people make that do the long run just the day after they, uh, their long bike ride. I think it's it's, in, yeah. it's best to, to split them apart, yeah. Um, yeah, what's uh, what's next for you? Do you got any plans for 2015? Uh, you know, whether or not it's going to be as a pro? Right. Um, 
I, I looked at both options. If I'm going to go pro, then, you know, there's one route, and if not, then there's another route. So uh, right now if I go pro, I'm going to probably um, start my season early and do New Zealand um, and then do uh, Texas. This served me well. I, I like that, and it's, you know, a championship race here. So, um, and then probably reevaluate after those two races, uh, see about KPR and, you know, different things like that. Um, and then, you know, if I don't go pro, then I'm just going to look at some fun races to do. I'll definitely do Texas again. Um, and then definitely probably do Muncie 70.3 and go from there and probably do a little more local races that are a lot cheaper to do than uh, Ironman races are. So, uh, so it'll just depend on, on which one, which, which road I decide to take, which I'll probably make that decision actually um, tomorrow or the next day is my oh. deadline. So, <laughs> all right. Now maybe we should have a follow up call then because you know this this won't go out until after the weekend. So uh, maybe we should include that as well. Oh, that's yeah, that's fine. It's I'm I'm definitely gonna have the decision by Thursday. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, all right. How can people get in touch with you, uh, Jocelyn, if they want to? Um, probably Facebook is the best way to do it. I'm um on Facebook a lot, so you can always look me up at Jocelyn McCauley um on Facebook. Um, I also you can always email me at Jocelyn McCauley at gmail dot com. Um, and I uh, obviously am not so awesome with Twitter, but <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I'm just getting into Twitter, so I I don't know it very well, but. Um, you know, my Twitter name is uh, Jossie McCauley, so J O C E McCauley. So yeah, cool. No, I'll, I'll put those links up in the show notes. Um, have you got some sponsors? Um, I do. I uh, QR yeah, set me up on an awesome bike, and uh, then I'm also on the Trigger Point team, so they have a couple oh, of okay. sponsors uh, affiliated with them as well. So I mean, obviously Trigger Point and. Speed fill systems and ISM saddles and road ID. So, um, but I am um, looking for more sponsors, and I'm going to be contacting a couple of different companies here soon. Um, as soon as I make my decision about pro and whatnot, and got a lot to do uh, in the next coming weeks. So, all right, cool. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Uh, anything else you want to plug? Um, no, nope, not really. <laughs> all right, thanks, Jocelyn. Much appreciated. Bye.